glad to be on the program. Awesome. I'm glad to have you as always. Um, so let's get straight into it. Um, what is stroke? So a uh, stroke is a life-threatening emergency. It is the signs and symptoms manifest of reduced blood flow to the brain. And the signs and symptoms are dependent on which area of the brain is reduced in blood. So for example, if the frontal part of the brain is, has reduced blood flow, that's more the motor symptoms. So you have weakness of the face, the arm, the leg, back area of the brain, that's more for vision. You can lose vision on half of your body. Um, more towards the language area, you can have speaking difficulty. Um, there are two types of strokes, really. Bleeding in the brain strokes and clot in the brain strokes. The clot in the brain strokes is due to a blockage of the pipes that carry blood towards different areas in the brain. That accounts for about 80% or four in five strokes. And then there's bleeding in the brain strokes, which result from boostage or rupture of the blood vessels that carry blood to the brain. And that's about one in five to 20% of strokes. Wow. Yeah. Right. So, so and, 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 and what, what actually causes, like, what, what causes stroke? And is there any preconceived condition or, you know, condition that persons could say, okay, well, you know, I have this, um, let's say, um, you know, uncomorbidity or whatever it is, so they say, right, I am prone to get a stroke. Yeah, so... There are several, so strokes that you, there are two pipes in the front of the brain, two pipes in the back of the brain that carry blood up to the brain. And then there's major uh, pump throughout the body, that's the heart. Clots in either the pipes or in the heart itself could break out and spread up to the brain and reduce the blood flow. Things that increase the risk of clots forming are one, the most common thing, high blood pressure. High blood pressure damages the pipes that carry blood up to the brain. Diabetes accounts for damage to the pipes as well. High cholesterol leads to plaque deposition. So the pipe diameter gets smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller until it kind of clots off. Smoking cigarettes increases the risk of that happening. Uh, those are some of the major things. So different heart rhythms, something called atrial fibrillation or heart disease, could increase the risk of clots forming in the heart and spreading up to the brain. Those are some of the major, major, major ones. And well, in our population nowadays, COVID-19 is a major risk factor for stroke because it damages the blood vessels and makes them stickier. So you're more likely to have clots. And worse yet, it's more common in younger people. Strokes are more common in older people um, because they're more likely to have high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, those things. But in COVID-19, you're more likely to get strokes in the younger population, which is very unfortunate. I know um, you mentioned some of the, the, the signs, but are there any other signs um, signs or symptoms to show that, okay, um, I should go check my doctor to see if there's something wrong with my vessels and my brain, et cetera, to say, okay, well, I am prone to getting a stroke. I should take these precautions, yeah? Well, the symptoms of, of a stroke coming on with somebody could be broken down into simple acronym called FAST, F-A-S-T. F stands for faith. So you're looking at somebody who think they're having a stroke, they're having difficulty um, moving their facial muscles. So ask them to smile and skin their teeth. Yes. You'll see one in a drooping. Right. A, arm. So if they have arm weakness, you ask them to raise their hands in front of you and one of the hands will start drooping down. And that's the side that's weak. Um, F-A-S, speaking problems. So you ask them to tell you what they had for breakfast this morning or say their name. And if they have slurred speech or an inability to produce any sort of speech, it's T time to call 811 and get them to the emergency department. Um, so F, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. but oh, sorry. No, you could go ahead. No, it's just F-A-S-T, fast. Okay, perfect. And um, now that, it, let's say somebody gets a stroke now, how do you manage it? You have a window period of about four and a half hours from the time the stroke starts mm -hmm. to be able to give them a certain type of medication in their veins that boosts up clots. So first things first, you need to recognize the signs of the stroke so that you can get them to a, to a, to a hospital. So that would be like a hospital that has a CT scan service. So in Trinidad, that would be Port of Spain, Eric Williams, Sandra Grandi, um, San Fernando, 
Arima and Point Forty when they come online as non-COVID hospitals, and in Tobago that be Scarborough when Roxborough comes online, because you need to get the CT scan to differentiate a clot in the brain stroke versus a bleeding in the brain stroke. If they have a clot in the brain stroke and it's four and a half hours, you can give them the medication in the veins that bursts up the clot. And if it's within that time period as well, too, you can give them medication to reduce the risk of further bleeding in the brain by dropping their blood pressure and managing the stroke accordingly. Um, so I should mention that well, my father, he died uh, from aneurysm. And we were talking um, before the segment started that aneurysm is caused by bleeding to the brain, right? Bleeding. So um, is there any prevention? Because I guess bleeding is different from clot. So uh, the symptoms might be different. So, um, you know, um, how does someone prevent dying because he died instantly? So, yeah. so aneurysms or, or bleeding, any brain type strokes, for especially from aneurysms, they're pretty mm -hmm. rare, but right. happen. They sometimes can run in families. So, yeah. people, who, so people who are at risk for aneurysms are uh, people who have high blood pressure, people who smoke, and people who have a specific kind of kidney disease called polycystic kidney disease. Right. Uh, increases your risk for having aneurysms in your brain. Yeah. You, if you have any of those things, you can check your doctor. They could do a special type of CT scan that looks at the pipes up into the brain. And if you do have an aneurysm, depending on the size of it, they might do some interventional procedure or just kind of watch and wait repeating the scan every year, every two years to see if the aneurysm is getting bigger. And if it's getting bigger, then yeah. it more, it's more beneficial to treat it uh, rather than the risk involved in going up and trying to fix it. Exactly. And in your last words, what advice would you give persons who, um, I guess, experiencing signs, symptoms, or I guess having, I guess, a good lifestyle in order to prevent strokes? What advice would you give the population? Um, everybody need to try and eat a healthy lifestyle. Obesity is one of the most common things we have in Trinidad that increases your risk of hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol. So eating a better diet, um, exercising at least 30 minutes, five times a week. Um, if you're smoking, stop smoking, uh, get help. Because all these things are difficult to do. Um, see a doctor. If you have things like high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, take your medication, do your diet properly to try and reduce your risk of these things getting worse. Mm -hmm. And if someone does have a stroke already, I mean, there's lots of rehabilitation programs that treat patients who've had strokes to get them back to quality. Awesome. Dr. Maharaj, thank you so much for coming and sharing our next, you know, our next neurological aspect. And I would definitely have you again because um, you share, you know, so much in-depth knowledge with regards to you know, these neurological diseases. So thank you so much. And guys, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this week's segment of Unique Not Different. Until next week, be good, do good. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. <laughs> you too.